guys. Welcome to episode four of the Voice Over Roadmap podcast. Uh, today, we've got some great questions in our three categories of performance, audio, and business. And we will also be taking a look at a mock audition that we had for Rogerson Athletics, which was a documentary narration style read. So before we get into our questions, just a quick note. If you'd like to submit a question for a future episode, you can do that at voiceoverroadmap.com slash questions. And if you'd like to check out the show notes for this episode, you can do that at voiceoverroadmap.com slash 004. You can get the show on iTunes, on YouTube, or right on the voiceoverroadmap.com website. And you can subscribe on iTunes and YouTube to stay up to date with all the new episodes. So let's jump into our questions for today, starting with our performance question, which this week comes from Ross. And Ross asks, what are some tips or things to keep in mind for auditions or jobs that take place in person with the client in a studio? This is definitely a good question and uh, is something that People who are in major cities like L.A. or New York probably deal with more than people who aren't in major markets, but you can definitely have in-person, in-studio sessions wherever you live. So it's definitely a good idea to know what to expect during them and to sort of have a plan in place for when you have such an audition or job. So I would say uh, one of the first things to sort of look at before you have an in-person audition or job is script preparation. So uh, definitely know the script beforehand, have read it a few times, prepared it, know where any sort of stumbling blocks are, be it any tricky phrases or words. Also pronunciation, if there's names or places or company names or anything like that, definitely do a little bit of research, find out how to pronounce it properly and know that going in in advance. When you show up, you want to just be as professional as possible and make the session or the audition go as smoothly as possible. Uh, that's going to make things good for you and for the client, and it's going to make them want to either hire you for if it's an audition or work with you again if it's a project. So if you can go in there and you don't have to check with them on pronunciations, you don't have to fumble over a bunch of lines, you can read the script nice and smoothly, you know, start to finish. That's all the kind of stuff that's going to make you come off as a professional. So definitely look at the script beforehand. I would say don't over-prepare because you can definitely get into your head a little bit if you start to nitpick every little word and sentence and, uh, you know, say, I need an upward inflection here, downward here, I need to stress this, you know, not stress that. So just get to the point where you're familiar with the script and you sort of know what's coming, you know any sort of troublesome areas, but don't go too far where you're analyzing and nitpicking every little thing. Another good thing to uh, keep in mind for in-person sessions is just your warm-up. So if you have a warm-up routine that you like, it's definitely a good idea to sort of get your voice nice and ready for the session, especially if it's an early morning session, and also pay attention to your hydration. A lot of times they'll give you a bottle of water in the studio, which can help with things like mouth noise and stuff like that. But also it's a good idea just to think about your hydration in the hours leading up to the actual session as well. So it's not just the kind of thing where you, you know, down a bottle of water, or Gatorade 10 minutes before you go in. Think about it in the hours leading up to it. Make sure you're properly hydrated. That'll go a long way to making sure that your actual voice is, you know, at its highest capabilities and at its best to perform. Other sort of things that are kind of obvious but maybe not is uh, the time and place. Make sure you know the time and place and show up early. Again, this just goes back to being a professional. Don't show up late. And even if you show up on time, it's better to really show up, you know, 10, 15 minutes early just so you're there. If they have time to start the session early, they'll appreciate that you're there and able to do so. So that way they can be ahead of schedule. Also, if they don't start early, but you're there early, that's still just some extra time you can use just to get comfortable, uh, you know, go over the script again, just sort of get prepared a little bit more and just be ready to go. So definitely know the time, know the place, show up a little bit early. It's also good to know the name of the person who you've been communicating with on email. So when you get there and you go to the front desk or whoever's at reception, you know who to ask for, you know who you're looking for, you can tell them who you are and it could be a little bit embarrassing if you show up there and the receptionist asks who you are and why you're there and who you're looking for and you don't really know the name of the person. It could just, you know, be a little awkward. So yeah, know the time, know the place, show up early, know who you're there to see and do your script prep and your vocal warm up beforehand and just be ready to go and be professional. That's the main thing so that they either have a good impression of you if it's an audition so that can aid in your ability to land the job or if it's an actual project, they can like working with you and want to do so again in the future. So let's move over to our audio question, which this week comes from Amy. And Amy asks, what is punch and roll and how can I do this? So punch and roll is basically a recording technique and a way to fix errors. 
One way that you can do that is just record everything in one long take, and then when you're finished, you go back to the computer, you edit out all the mistakes, you copy your different takes together, and you get your final take. What Punch and Roll is doing is kind of fixing mistakes on the go as you're recording. So if you're reading something and you make a mistake, instead of just continuing on and rereading it and worrying about editing it in later, what you would do is actually stop. You would go back uh, five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, and the engineer would actually play for you in your headphones your read that you just recorded. And what you would do as a talent is begin to read along with yourself. So you're listening to your take in the headphones and you're reading along with yourself. Now, when you get to the point where you made a mistake, you're gonna just keep continuing reading and hopefully not make that mistake again and do a better job. And what the engineer is gonna do is they're going to start recording at that moment or a second or so before it. So what happens is you have the past take and you have the part of it that's good. And then right before you get up to the part that's the mistake, the engineer is gonna punch you in and you're gonna start recording your new take right on top of it. And if you do this throughout a session, at the end of the session, you have a full take that has no mistakes because you've gone back and you've punched yourself in to fix them. So it's not necessarily the kind of thing that I'd say you have to do on a commercial read or something short or quick like that. Um, it's just, it could just be unnecessary. If you like doing it that way and it works for you, for sure you can do it. But I think it comes into play more on audiobooks and long form narration and stuff like that where you're gonna be reading for a long period of time and hopefully not making a ton of mistakes. But when you do, you kind of fix them right then and there and then keep on going. So punch and roll isn't necessarily something that you have to know how to do and you have to have experience with or you're never gonna be successful. It's not really that essential, but it's definitely good to know what it is to have some familiarity with it. Because if you are in a situation, kind of going back to our first question, where you're in studio and maybe the engineer there or the producer there wants to do punch and roll, they might ask you if you're familiar with it. And it could be helpful just to sort of know what they're talking about, know how to do it, know what to expect when they when you're going through and reading. Um, I, I did an audition a few weeks ago and it was at an audiobook company. So it was a company that just produces audiobooks. So they had me read some long form stuff. So we were reading like a few pages at a time from these books. And I had asked him before we got into it, I said, if I make a mistake, you know, what, what would you want me to do? Do you want me to stop and go back or do you want me to just keep going and reread? And he said, no, we're just going to, you know, do punch and roll. So are you familiar with that? Have you ever done that before? And I said, yeah. So situations like that, it's helpful just to know what they're talking about, know how to do it, know what to expect. It's typically the kind of thing that's done in a situation like that where you have an engineer who's sort of at the controls while you, the talent, are reading. But if you have access to your computer and your start and stop button while you're in front of your mic, you can definitely do it yourself. You just sort of, when you make a mistake, stop, go back, hit play, and give yourself five, ten seconds of a ramp and listen to yourself and start reading with yourself. And when you get to the moment of second or two before you made the mistake, you would just hit record and punch yourself in. So in Pro Tools, the way you would sort of enable this is there's a recording option called Quick Punch. So you would basically enable that. So that's the sort of recording setting that you're using. And I can't speak exactly to what the terminology is in other pieces of software, but I'm sure if you do a quick Google search for Punch Record or Punch and Roll, and then the name of your software, I'm sure you can find some actual, some actual uh, specific instructions on how to do that. So yeah, thanks for the question, Amy. That is a overview of what punch and roll is and how it works. Moving on to our business question for this week, which comes from Irene, and she asks, can you describe a search procedure for finding specific agencies and production companies that market to a certain community or demographic? So I'll sort of broaden this question a bit and just say, what are some ways that we can find specific agencies or production companies that are specific to any sort of category or any sort of niche, be it a community or demographic or maybe a topic. Maybe we're looking for production companies that work with restaurants or food companies. Uh, maybe I want to market myself to them because I have a new spot that I did for a food company or a restaurant. And I think that's a cool little niche that I can get into. So I want to find companies that specifically work with those kinds of videos and make those kind of projects. Um, a great tool for this is Google Advanced Search and you can get to that by just going to Google and typing in Google Advanced Search. That's an easy way to find it. And uh, it'll take you to a page that's basically like a Google search. You'll have a search box there, but you'll have multiple search boxes. So what you can do is get really detailed with what you're searching. So you would still search for video production company or ad agency or whatever your key search terms are. But now what Google Advanced Search will let you do 
is specify the language of the website that you're looking for, the uh, region of the website that you're looking for, certain terms that are appearing on that site, which so that's a huge one. So you can now search for video production company, but also narrow your search results to video production company results that have the terms restaurant or food or whatever you're looking for to go along with our example from before. So if you're looking for specific communities or demographics, you can certainly search for those sort of terms and add those into the terms appearing search box. And you can basically just take a broad search for something like a video production company or an ad agency and start to narrow that down to really specific companies. And then I just see what kind of search results you get from that. And you can put things in quotes like say I had, um, say I wanted to find companies uh, that made videos for Italian food restaurants. Now I can put Italian food in quotes and I could search for that and actually search for that term Italian food as opposed to searching for the terms Italian and food which is going to return results for websites that have the word Italian and the word food. I can actually put quotes around it and just get back results that have Italian food. Uh, that's a really specific example, and I don't know how relevant that is to something that you'd want to search, but just to give you the idea of the kind of narrowing down and uh, specificity that you can get with your search results using Google Advanced Search. So yeah, Irene, I would definitely recommend checking out Google Advanced Search and uh, playing around with that for a little bit and seeing what kind of results you can get for the certain communities or demographics or whatever it is that you're looking for uh, in terms of your search results for your companies that you want to market to. All right, so let's jump over to our mock audition for this week, which is for Rogerson Athletics. And this is a sort of documentary narration, corporate branded video kind of read. That's what we were going for. The kind of video that you might see um, if it was an actual documentary, you might see on something like the Discovery Channel or the History Channel. Or if it was a branded content piece, you might just see it on the company website for this fake company, Rogerson Athletics, or you might see it on their YouTube channel or something like that. A lot of times brands will make these sort of about the company videos and they'll play them on their website, on social channels, just to sort of get the brand out there, introduce people to the company, that sort of thing. So our winner for this audition was Brad Vinikow. And Brad gave a really nice read for it. So what I'm going to do is play for you Brad's audition. And then we'll talk a little bit about what was great about his audition and why it would be a winning audition. So here is Brad's audition for Rogerson Athletics. Founded in 1973, Rogerson Athletics began as a humble sporting goods store on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Brothers Jim and Philip Rogerson, both lifelong athletes, started the shop with the hope of providing a convenient location for athletes of all experience levels to find the exact gear they needed. Fast forward to today, and Rogerson Athletics has grown to over 100 store locations across the U.S. and Canada, becoming synonymous with quality sports and recreational equipment. All right, there you go. There's Brad's read for Rogerson Athletics. So yeah, so Brad had a nice announcer, narrator vibe without being too corporate or too stuffy. And that's what we're going for here. It's not quite that guy next door conversational casual thing, but it's also not really, really technical, really corporate, really stuffy. We're looking for, I'd say something in the middle of that, but leaning towards the more corporate narrator. So something a little bit leaning that way, but not all the way technical, stuffy, no emotion, not that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, you know, Brad had a really nice, bold, strong voice, and he plays the narrator sort of storyteller role well, which is really great. Going along with that storyteller thing, he had nice inflections. It's not flat, it's not dull, it's big and it's bold and it's a narrator, but there's still inflections. He's telling the story of this company, he's introducing it, he's telling you about the founders, he's telling you about what they do. Um, He's taking you along for the ride and telling you about what this company is and their history and keeping you engaged. That's an important thing. Documentaries, this kind of historical look back can definitely get sort of boring or dull if it's if the read doesn't have a lot of energy or life into it and brad did a good job of you know keeping some personality keeping some inflection without going way overboard and being you know super conversational super laid back because we didn't want that we still want this to be professional and the narrator and he did a good job of sort of towing that line he also had great audio quality it was nice and upfront and bold sounding nice and clean and that's important when you're auditioning your audio quality does play a big factor Obviously, the read itself and the performance is going to be the most important thing. So that's the first area to put your concentration and your focus on. But audio quality is definitely important as well. And Brad's audio quality here is great. You know, it's just important to have competitive audio quality. Audio quality that doesn't detract from your read and make someone say, oh, you know, that was a great read, but, you know, this audio quality is just not going to cut it for our project. So we can't hire this guy. Uh, Not the case here. Brad had great audio quality and a great read. 
If I was going to change something or what I could see a client coming back with is maybe try it a little bit more casually. Again, not to contradict what I said before, we don't want it to be super laid back, super casual, but maybe a little bit more personality, a little bit more of a laid back approach to it would have been nice to hear. Something that he could have done is maybe submitted an audition that had this read that we just heard, but also a second read that's, you know, the more casual approach to it just to kind of hear how he can do both of those things and how he might be a little bit flexible. So if he's hired for a session, you know, we could work with him, try, try it a couple different ways, get a few different reads, that kind of thing. But yeah, it is definitely, like I said, a great read. And if this was a real project that I was casting, Brad would absolutely be sent to the client for their final review and approval. And uh, yeah, so great read, Brad, great job. So what I'm going to do now is play a produced version of this read that I did with some music and sound effects so you can hear what this read would sound like in the context of a finished spot or a finished project. This is something I always recommend for your audition process. If you want to proof your audition, you can sort of play some music behind it or just kind of find some music that has a vibe or a feeling that will be similar to the final project and then just play your audition on top of it and see how it feels. Does it fit well or does it feel a little awkward and a little bit off? That's a great way to tell if you really nailed the, uh, the tone and the vibe of a read. If you can play some music behind it and then listen to your read with that and it sounds like a real commercial or a real documentary or a real whatever, that's a pretty good indicator that you did a good job getting the proper tone and the uh, proper feeling and authenticity behind it. So if you're somebody who submitted a read for the Rogerson Athletics audition, or if you just like to hear how your read would stack up against Brad's or in the context of a finished spot, you could actually download the music and sound effects bed that you're going to hear behind Brad's audition in a second on the show notes page. And you could put your own audition on top of it and hear how it stacks up. Or if you didn't submit an audition, the copy is there as well. So you can go ahead and record an audition and put it with the music and sound effects and just hear how it sounds. So you can get that at the show notes page, which is going to be at voiceoverroadmap.com slash 004. So let's take a listen to the produced version of Brad's Read. Founded in 1973, Rogerson Athletics began as a humble sporting goods store on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Brothers Jim and Philip Rogerson, both lifelong athletes, started the shop with the hope of providing a convenient location for athletes of all experience levels to find the exact gear they needed. Fast forward to today. And Rogerson Athletics has grown to over 100 store locations across the U.S. and Canada, becoming synonymous with quality sports and recreational equipment. All right, there you go. So you can hear how the music and the sound effects and the voiceover, the style and the way that he read it, it meshes well together. It doesn't sound too upbeat or too laid back. And that's the kind of thing that you want to listen for when you're putting your own auditions on top of music. Hear how the energy and the style and, uh, you know, the personality in your read works with the kind of music that would be used in the spot. So again, if you want to download that music and sound effects bed so you can put your own audition on top of it, or you want to see the copy so you can record an audition and try it out for yourself. You can get all of that on the show notes page, which is at voiceoverroadmap.com slash 004. And that's going to wrap things up for episode four of the Voice Over Roadmap podcast. So thank you guys so much for listening in. And if you'd like to listen to the show on other platforms, you can get it on iTunes, on YouTube, or on the voiceoverroadmap.com website. And you can subscribe on iTunes and YouTube to stay up to date with all the future upcoming episodes. And if you like the show and can leave a review and a rating on iTunes, that would be great and go a long way to uh, helping the show out and getting it out there. And again, the show notes for this episode can be found at voiceoverroadmap.com slash 004. And uh, yeah, make sure you tune back in next week because we will have a guest on the show, Dave Corvassier, who will be uh, sitting in and helping to answer some of your questions. And again, if you'd like to submit a question for a future episode, you can do that at voiceoverroadmap.com slash questions. So thank you guys so much again for listening and we'll see you in episode five. 